Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yesudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Today let's look at vitamin D and the skin. This is particularly relevant in the winter months when we do not get enough sun exposure on our skin and therefore are likely to be deficient. Let's examine the skin conditions that are associated with vitamin D deficiency and the practical ways that we can supplement this vital vitamin. First, what is vitamin D? It's referred to as the sunshine vitamin and it's unique because vitamin D is made in the skin when we expose ourselves to sunlight. There are two main dietary types of vitamin D including ergocalciferol which is vitamin D2 and cholecalciferol which is vitamin D3. Ergocalciferol is synthesized by some plants like mushrooms and it's not as potent as cholecalciferol that can be obtained through dietary sources such as salmon, tuna, egg yolk and cod liver oil. In spite of these multiple sources of vitamin D, deficiency is prevalent throughout the world. It's long been known that vitamin D is required for healthy bones but it also plays an important part in the function of the skin as well. It is known to regularize the division of skin cells which is a process called keratinization. It plays a role in the defense against surface infections. It also maintains the skin immune system thereby ensuring that inflammatory cells are kept in check. Let's look at some of the conditions where vitamin D plays a critical role. Psoriasis has the most evidence with regards to the effectiveness of vitamin D. By reducing the inflammation and by regularizing the keratinization process, vitamin D plays a significant role in controlling the skin condition. Serum vitamin D levels in some patients with psoriasis have been found to be significantly low in various studies. Those with serum vitamin D deficiency are advised to supplement oral vitamin D3 to prevent psoriasis related complications. There is a higher prevalence of atopic dermatitis in the temperate climates which correlates with less sun exposure and therefore reduced vitamin D production. An accepted but poorly understood function of vitamin D3 is the regulation of the skin barrier integrity and permeability. Therefore, reduction of vitamin D could be hypothesized to play a role in atopic dermatitis. At present, there is no convincing evidence or data that dietary vitamin D can be used to treat atopic eczema. But if anyone is deficient, it's certainly worthwhile supplementing. Low vitamin D levels have also been found in some with vitiligo. There are studies that have shown that very low vitamin D levels can be associated with other autoimmune conditions in vitiligo. However, there are contradictory results on the efficacy of oral vitamin D supplementing in treating vitiligo or reducing disease activity in vitiligo. More studies are therefore required before we come to specific conclusions about the effectiveness of vitamin D in vitiligo. The link between vitamin D and skin cancers is also not clear cut. There is some evidence that it is important in melanomas. In fact, the British Association of Dermatology guidelines suggest that we supplement vitamin D in those who have been diagnosed with malignant melanoma. The prognosis also tends to be poorer for those with low levels of vitamin D if they have been diagnosed with a melanoma. There are other skin conditions where vitamin D could play a part. Low levels of vitamin D have been found in those with acne, alopecia areata, hair loss, lupus, and ichthyosis or dry skin. I tend to recommend vitamin D for those with hair loss of any cause and also for those with acne whatever their age. How do we supplement vitamin D? In those living in temperate climates like the UK and the US, it is vital to take vitamin D in winter as we do not get adequate sun exposure or sunshine from November to March. It's also important in places like India where in spite of the abundance of sunlight, Studies have shown that vitamin D deficiency exists throughout the country. Practically speaking, if we can get about 30 minutes of sun exposure on the arms and legs every day, that will avoid deficiency. But this is not always practical or possible. The darker our skin, the more sun exposure we need to make the vitamin D that we require on a day-to-day -day basis. Keeping that in mind, we need both foods and supplements rich in vitamin D. Natural dietary sources like salmon, sardines, shiitake mushrooms and egg yolk is useful. 
If we take tablets, we need about 600 international units a day for those less than 70 years of age. After the age of 70, this increases to 800 international units a day. For those with other medical conditions like obesity and malabsorption, higher doses may be required. Remember that when we take supplements, we need to take vitamin D3 and not vitamin D2, as D3 is much more effective in the skin. In conclusion, vitamin D plays a key role in skin biology and low levels are associated with multiple dermatological conditions. We should therefore ensure that we take foods rich in vitamin D and also supplement this vital vitamin, particularly in the winter months. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.